Hey friends, today we're going to go over Ableton Gate, which is probably the most unsung hero of Ableton devices. Um, it's got just so many different uses, and you can really clean your mix up by using Ableton Gate. Um, anyway, this is a snare track. Let's just listen to what it is. This is just an over the snare mic, like a classic, uh, this is probably an SM57, over top of a snare drum. And the most classic use of a gate is to gate drums, to basically all this extra, like you can hear the toms and the kick drum there, listen. Right, I just want these this flam hit, this double hit here, and then this hit. So, you know, the, the normal thing you do, you grab a gate, you stick it on there. And let's just uh, give gate a look. So you've got a threshold and a return. So the signal that's being fed into the gate at this point is just the snare track. So if I turn this on and pull the threshold down, I get... Which is sort of what I want, right? But I want, you know, I want more. I, what, I, what I would like is to get some of the natural decay of the snare drum in there without listening to the kick drum or the toms. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing to think about is that let's just talk about how gate works. The signal, as the signal passes this, let's get this kind of out of the way. As the signal passes this first line, the threshold line, that's when the gate will open up. You'll be able to hear the signal, right? So as you can see, if I, just the very tip, it still works. If I pull it down, I can hear, I can hear the tom, right? Okay, so obviously I just want the snare drum. So the first thing I would do is I would set the threshold, you know, as high as I need it to be above the other sounds, right? You can see the sounds on here. See these graphics? Right? Okay. This return, though, this is how long it will take as the signal goes, goes back down to be taken out. Okay? So signal goes up, threshold. It waits for the threshold to be audible. As it goes down, if you turn this return down a little bit, you'll be able to hear longer decays of that initial signal that went through, right? So... So if it was this way, listen to the snare, it would be very unnatural. Clack. Right? We don't want that. We want kind of a longer thing. Now, you've also got these other controls. You've got like release, for example, so we can let this ring out just a little bit longer. So. Okay. And then without the gate, you get. Right? Okay. So that's, that's gate in its standard application, right? Something I should also mention that a lot of people don't realize is that you might be saying, well, man, that snare drum track, it's its just a little, it doesn't have as much attack as it does when the gate's off. Like, it doesn't have as snappy of a... Well, just remember that the gate needs to... You know, this, is a, this is a digital system, so what it can do is it can delay the signal coming into the gate and be able to see what's going to come. And now, certain amount, using this thing called look-head time, so, you know, low amounts of look-head time are, are going to make your attack sound worse. So this is at zero. Fleh. Here, that's like, the snare drum's like, fleh. Now, if I put it at 1.5, we get... I'd say that's almost usable. But if you put it at 10 milliseconds, so 10 milliseconds of look-ahead time, listen. Listen how snappy the... The snare drum is so as you're working with acoustic drums and different sources try the different look ahead times to get the result you're looking for okay so that's that's gate in its standard usage okay just a, a kind of a standard use but i mean gate you can do so many important things for mixing um let's go ahead and look at some of the other applications so this is a full drum loop right there's a bunch of stuff going on let's listen to this So do you hear all the stuff going on? There's like these weird hats in the background and all this other stuff. Let's just say I wanted to isolate some of the louder parts of this drum loop. So, you know, using gate, we could... Now you notice how, how fast those sounds go away. So let's turn the return up a little bit so we can get more decay on the stuff that... Remember, return is just adding decay to the stuff that has already passed the threshold, right? So it's not going to... If it's down here, it's not going to let the lower sounds out. It's only going to let the tails of the longer sounds out. Okay? <laughs> hope that makes sense. So... So listen, as I turn the threshold up, I get different sounds, right? Now, what's nice about this setting is I've now isolated the drums without listening to the reverb, right? This is a good opportunity to listen to the difference that look-ahead time gives you. So, 
at zero. You know, in some ways it's nice because it softens the hits of the drums. I mean, maybe that's something you're looking for. Um, at 1.5, almost usable. At 10, though, it's almost a no-brainer when, when working with drums. If you want a snappy attack, the longer look-ahead time works almost every time. Now, you can also change the attack, so I could really get this to snap. At, you know, you know, really less than, you know, two milliseconds, you're going to start to get clicks, but sometimes you might want those. It's a minimal clicking situation here. That's kind of nice. So, you know, you can leave the attack as low as you want. Now, hold, what that means is that once it passes the threshold, regardless of what the other settings are, it will hold the gate open. So if I have it all the way up here at 1.5 seconds, you know, you're never going to hear it close, but, you know, somewhere in here you can get... So do you see how hold can be useful? Maybe you want some of the, the beat on, some of the beat off, right? All right, so let's set that back kind of low because I don't really need to use it. Um, now, release time. This is really abrupt. I can use release time to slowly let the gate out, right? So watch. See this thing? This is, this is the gain reduction. In the same way that you see that on the compressor, you can watch how long it takes to go down. So over here, we've got... Boom, 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 right? Over here. Right? So that's nice. Now, another thing that you have is floor. So floor, essentially, you know, all the way down, this means that when the gate is not being activated, there is legitimately nothing that you can hear. It's, it's way below, minus infinity, right? Now, if you have this, though, set at minus, let's say, minus five, listen to what you get. What you've got now is kind of a dynamic control over the, the beat. I'm going to make this pretty obvious so we really can hear what's going on. So, so let's turn the return back down so we have a really snappy gate. All right, so let's listen to this. Really snappy gate. Now, if I put this at negative 5, listen to this. With it off. Listen how loud the reverb is now with it on. So that's what floor is for. You can you can get a lot of dynamic control. Let's try negative 10 so you can really hear the difference. And then with the gate off. Okay, so I'm going to go into some of the other features now. This is just kind of how you use gate, uh, you know, using the, the same track as its input signal and, you know, being able to kind of shape the dynamics of something and to really kind of just clean things up, right? So now let's look at side-chaining the gate. So I'm just going to cut this out. Let's just go ahead and play this beat so we can hear what's, what's going on with this beat. So yet again, we have, you know, some, some full drum elements. We've got a kick, a snare, some weird other drum hits and stuff like that. In this track, I have just a bass sound that I've made. I'm going to turn the gate off for now. We're just going to listen to this. So something interesting about gate, if you open it up, you have sidechain options. So I'm just going to leave this gate where it is. I'm just going to use a different gate now just for the sake of, of demonstration. So now when you click this little arrow at the top of gate, just like in the compressor, you get sidechain options. And this is where you can have a lot of fun. So I'll turn the sidechain feature on. So what I need to do is I need to grab... I can grab any audio from anywhere else and use that as what's controlling the gate. And this is where all the fun happens. So now I can grab this drum loop. So I, I, I chose this track, Micro Swung 1, right? And I am now listening to that track. So now you can see, you can see that the signal that's, that's being fed into the gate that's sitting on the bass track is coming from this track, right? So this gives us a lot of options. First of all, if you want to listen to what's coming in, you can use this headphone feature, right? Right now I can hear the drums coming through there, especially even if it's off. Okay. So what we can do now is we can mess around with these controls and we can stutter or change the gate on the bass to react to what's coming in. So let's go ahead and listen to some of those sonic results. Right? Right? 
Now, before I was talking about that clicking sound when you use really low attack times, listen to this. This is an example of when that clicking will likely occur. Hear that clicking? It's amazing. Just a tiny little bit of attack can really can really soften that, you know? But I don't need this to be... I mean, really, because this is going with the kick drum, I don't need this to be fast at all. In fact, this might be a great example of when it's good to open the, the attack a little bit. So maybe... That way the kick drum can come through, the snap of the kick drum can come through and this when this attack is a little bit higher. And maybe I want to whoop whoop. Okay, so let's talk about flip. What we can do is we can, let's go ahead and open the side chain up. We're gonna grab track two again and listen to this incoming signal, right? Now, when you hit flip, what will happen is the bass will now only happen when the drums aren't happening, right? And remember, the original bass signal sounds like this. It's just one continuous note, right? What I'm using is I'm using gate to dynamically change things in, in the bass, okay? So now that I've turned on flip, check it out. Now we can now, now listen to the result. Isn't that fun? So what we can do now is we can mess around with some of these controls and get maybe a, a you know a pretty usable fun bass part. Now remember, because the side chain is on, the white signal, see this thing outlined in white? That's what you're listening to on this on the track. What what the what the gate itself is listening to though is the grade signal in the background. See that grade signal in the background right there? That's what the gate's listening to, just, just so you don't get confused, right? So. So that's what flip does, this way. If I flip it. Okay, so. So that's a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and look at this next example. Here I've just got this pad. So in this case, what I can do is I can use Gate's side chaining feature to create a trance gate. This is really simple. All you do is you feed it in a rhythmic signal, okay? Let's go ahead and listen to what this next track is. This is just... This is just an impulse with this rhythm going on, right? What I can do, the, the, the magical thing about gate is that you can feed it sidechain signals that you can't even hear, right? I can just mute this track, go back to my pad, and I can put a gate in there. So here's a gate. And what I can do is I can feed the sidechain input from impulse, right? Track five. So now we get... Right? So if I give it some more look ahead time, I can get it to be a little snappier. Right? So now I've got, you know, along with this beat. Now, something that's really fun uh, and, and is, is to kind of, when you have these kinds of situations, you want to build energy in a song. You can open the floor at the end of bars so to get like energy to build up. So like... Right, that's kind of fun. Let's talk about some other applications. Okay, so in this next group I have a beat. A really, really basic beat, right? So one common application of a gate, especially in the 80s, was to gate your reverb on your snare. And since then, a lot of new, you know, new tech has come out, and this gate is so capable that there are ways of doing it old school style and ways of doing it new school style. So, let's go ahead and listen to this this loop. Oh, it's horribly bland. Okay, so I mean, one thing we want to do is add some reverb to the snare. So I've just I've added this reverb here, and and just so you know, this reverb is, you know, I, I've got a lot of high end in it, right? 
it's extremely sloppy, right? This isn't going to do us much good. But if I put a gate at the end of it, you know, the, the first move in the old school way of doing this is you just take the threshold down. You know, and you could figure out maybe the millisecond dividend of your song. And a quick and dirty way to do that, by the way, if you don't know, is to just select a small amount of audio. I've selected this amount. And if you look down there at the bottom, duration 47 milliseconds. So now I can go in here and I can say, all right, gate, you get a hold time of 47 milliseconds and no release. So. Or maybe I would like it doubled. So what is that, like 98? So that's like your like 80s way of doing this. Now, what's really rad about this modern uh, gate that we have here is we can sidechain instead. We can sidechain the input from the snare track. And what, what, what this is going to allow us to do is get a lot more surgical and a lot more snappy with the gate. Because look at that signal coming in. Instead of having that big washy reverb signal coming in, we have this nice... You know, and if I turn the look ahead time, turn the attack down, I'm going to turn the hold back down to a low amount and work with the release instead. Now what we're doing, see, why, why would you want to, you know, do it this way instead of just turning the decay time down? Well, the main reason is that a long and big fat reverb time, decay time, means that there's a lot of buildup of high frequencies really fast. And so using a gate, you get more of a snappy, uh, you get a wide signal extremely fast. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a wide signal. So I've got the stereo jacked all the way up here. And what we want is to gate that really quick. So we get... Which is an altogether different sound than it would be were we to just turn the decay time down on the reverb, right? So... That's the original reverb. This is with the gate. And this is the beat without the reverb at all. Okay. So, finally, I recorded <laughs> I recorded myself singing and I want to show you uh, a, another really popular modern trick that's really important for people working with vocals. So, so I'm just going to play some of these elements. <laughs> So here's this vocal, listen to this. Vocals can get messy If you don't gaze your echo tails So as you can hear, uh, I'm saying vocals can get messy if you don't gate your echo tails. So when you have vocals and you have effects on them, you know, effects are really great, uh, you know, especially tail effects on vocals, they help them kind of blend and give them a sense of space or whatever. But what can happen is, is they can get really, it's hard to understand what the person is saying when there's a lot of echo over the words that they're saying, right? So the way to combat this is, let's just listen to the vocal. Vocals can get messy. Right? So if I turn on this gate, right, this gate is being sidechained from the vocal track, right? I'm sending the vocal track into the sidechain. What that's going to allow me to do is to, is to shape the delay so that when I'm actually singing, the gate is going to duck down the, the delay a little bit so that you can hear me better, right? So this is without it. Vocals can get messy. And here's with it. If you don't gate your echo tails. So it's a subtle thing, but it really helps, especially when you have a bunch of stuff happening at the same time. So vocals can get messy if you don't gate your echo tail. Now here's without it. Vocals can get messy. You see what I'm saying? So when I'm not singing, the echo is louder. When I am singing, it's it's quieter. Let's just go ahead and do this uh, from scratch. So I'm going to grab a gate, slap it in here. We're just going to listen to the vocals. Vocals can get messy. Now that's one way to do it, but what we need to do is we need to use the, we need to use the side chain to be fed the vocal track. So this is just the, the dry vocal track, right? Being sent into here. Okay, so now we've got vocals can get messy. Now that might be cool, but that's not what we're going for. In this case, because 
This is a gradual effect. I really need to open the attack and release times to allow this uh, this gate to kind of be soft and gentle as to when it engages and disengages. So we're going to engage over a long period of time. So vocals can, can get, get messy. Now the next part I have to do is obviously flip the gate. So when the vocals are in, it's not gating. And when the vocals are out, it is allowing signal through, right? So now we've got vocals can get messy if you don't gate your echo tails. Now, that's extremely drastic, right? This is a drastic difference between when I'm not singing and when I am. So the final thing you need to do is open the floor up. So I only really need the, the delay to go down a little bit when I'm singing, right? So maybe 10 dB. Vocals can get messy if you don't gate your echo tails. Right? I maybe even can get away with a little bit less. Vocals can get messy. So without it, vocals can get messy. Vocals can get messy. And let's listen to it with everything else. Vocals can get messy if you don't gate your echo tails. <laughs> okay, well, if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe, ring that little bell so you know when I'm making videos. Much love, everybody. Use Gate as much as you can. It'll clean your mixes up. Love ya. See you later. Bye.